one. Nitrous we will be looking at, but not in this video. Launch control we will be looking at, and we're skipping in this video. Now, fuel tuning. This is gonna be where we have our VE table one, VE table two, and our target air fuel. We've set our target air fuel table, but we need to go into our VE table one for, for right now and make sure this is set up right. So we've configured our VE table one here based on throttle percent, not on map pressure. Notice that my little purple, pur purple cursor is gonna be indicating where my position's at. Notice it is based on throttle percent right here, but notice if I'm changing my throttle, moving my throttle around here, I'm hitting the gas pedal in the car, it's not tracing in the table. I need to go and do a key restart on the, uh, the, the Infinity, and I need to cycle the power. So let's go do that right now. I'm gonna turn off the power, let it power down. I heard the, uh, the relay power the Infinity down, and now we can find my screens went um, showing it's not connected. Let me power cycle it back on the fuel pump primes, let the Infinity reconnect to my laptop. Now when it reconnects, it's going to be tracking um, against that throttle position, or it should track against that throttle position. Now we can see that little cursor is right here at zero throttle, and now if I move my foot, notice it tracks to throttle position. So that's one weird thing that the Infinity has. Sometimes if you change certain parameters, you have to do a key cycle. So if you're programming and things aren't making sense, make sure you commit the modifications, key off, wait till it powers off, power it back on again, and then stuff usually works. I don't know why it's like that, but um, some quirkiness we have to deal with. So in our VE table, what we need to do is go and set our breakpoints a bit more specific to this. Zero, we want to be for our closed throttle. Then we want to have another breakpoint at one. Then we want to have one at three. Then we want to have one at five, seven, nine. We'll do one here at 12. We'll do one here at 15. We'll do one at 20. Uh, we'll do one here at 25. We'll do one here at 30. We'll do one here at 35. Then we'll do here at 40. Then we'll do 50. And we'll say yes. It'll try to increment our values here. It'll be easier to go downwards from this. Let's do here one at 100. Let's do one here at 90. And again, this is throttle percent, not map pressure. 70, 60, we'll do one here at 55. So let's do shift control C. So now we have our table with our values in here for a throttle. Notice the first portion of the table here from zero to about 20, I have more data points. That's because when we tip our throttle open on a large throttle body like this, it's gonna allow more airflow in. It's gonna be a little bit unlinear in airflow to throttle lookup in nature with a big throttle body. So that's why I have more data points here. Anytime I do any kind of alpha end tuning, whether it's ITB based, big throttle body based, um, naturally aspirated applications like this, I always give myself more resolution on the bottom compared to the top. We'll find that as we get up into the higher throttle angles here, the airflow doesn't change very much. From 70, 80% throttle and higher, it doesn't really affect the, uh, the airflow and the fueling demands. So we'll find that the table's going to have um, better suited for this kind of shape. So what we'll do here is copy our breakpoints from our VE table one, and we're gonna copy it into our VE table two. So copy paste. And then I'm gonna do shift control C and, and commit those modifications to the ECU. And now we're gonna jump into the table and put some values in here that should allow it to fire up and run. So when we're at low RPM here at low throttle angles, I'm gonna be assuming in this range right here, we can get away with something like 40 to 50% VE. And then when we start to get into light throttle driving here, maybe 35 to 4,000 RPM, we'll assume we're right something at something like 65% throughout the rest of the table. We'll just put some values in here. And then between these two, I'll go and use H. And then I'm gonna copy my 12% throttle row here. I'm gonna copy into my 100% throttle row. And I'm gonna be increasing this using shift plus. That's gonna be increasing that. And I'll bump it up to maybe something like 75, 80% VE. And then between these two, between 12% and 100%, I'll use V, I'll vertically interpolate. So now we can see this is the three-dimensional table that I've just created here. So let's do shift control C and let's commit those changes. So this is a reasonable table that I've just created very quick to get me up and running on the infinity. Because it's VE based, we'll find that this should represent the estimated airflow coming into the engine. Um, we have our parameter down here called mass airflow pound per minute. Now, mass airflow is usually better known for uh, working with a mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna be registering how much airflow would be coming into our infinity if we had a MAF sensor. Now we don't have a MAF sensor, but the VE table will simulate how much estimated airflow is coming in. So the same idea as a MAF sensor actually measuring the amount of air mass coming in, we'll find that the table here is gonna be 
estimating it. So it's our job to do a best estimation of the air mass. And if we look here at the pound per minute of the mass airflow, we should find, once we get to do some full throttle uh, tuning a little bit later in the video, we should find that this corresponds to roughly the horsepower they're making. That's gonna give us indication that our table here is pretty close to being accurate. Um, there is some, some oddities that can happen here. So if our fuel injector data isn't programmed exactly right, um, or there's some kind of other fuel pressure problems going on, that skew up the reporting of the fuel pressure. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.